Hey Don. Hi Shem. What are you up to? Uh, just trying to figure some stuff out as I'm going along. This is the old bodice that I've torn apart. Uh, you can you can see using using that technique from the British Museum. Uh, you you've got gaps here, so while you get concertina this way and this way, what you don't have is the overlap that you're meant to that you meant to have for the scale. So that's why I've gone through and uh, did all this. So now I've got five rows and this is pretty much the bottom half of the bodice front and back. So from the underarms down. So the bodice from the underarms down, okay, was uh, this much and then these scales are obviously not enough to complete the whole bodice so I'm going to have to make some more new ones. Uh, so the reason why I've made it this length so you can see you can see its edge is in line with uh, with this one and goes all the way to the end there uh, is so that it can be double breasted so double breasted what I mean is uh, here with with this bodice you can see it's a single breast with a slight with a slight overlap to close it off. My double breasted ones will be continuing here and continuing there so that the overlap will be complete uh, from, from this side to, to here. So that's what I mean by double, double breasted and single breasted. Uh, so that's one of my guides that I'm using for uh, my sizing but there's other guides I'm using as well so let me get this out of the way uh, here what I have is a cardboard template that I had made of the liner thorax well the bottom half of the liner thorax and it's to scale so this is obviously not as long as what the double breasted version is going to be uh, you can see the front so you've got an armhole cut out uh, then the front part then the armhole cut out again then the back part and then the armhole cut out in the rest of the side section so i'm going to use this as my guide here when you when you look over there for my for my height so as you can as you can see I've got my crease here that's my starting point and then I need it to go at least up to up to here high so here with this sample that I made of the end result that I'm gonna have with uh, with these scales I've I can kind of gauge exactly how many more scales I'll need to, to get, rows of scales I need to, to get to that height. So here I can see I've got one row to do, two rows and three rows, because here, if you, if you see the third row goes in line here. So when I'm counting, I need 60 in this, uh, 61 for, for each one of these rows. I've got 25 here, look, look up here, I've got 25 in a row here, so that's 50, uh, and that's 50, plus half 10, uh, so 25 in a row, so say 10 for, for one row, and another 10 for the other row, plus the one, plus the one, and I'll have enough for possibly another three rows, so that will complete, if you, that will complete my one, two, three rows extra that I need, and then I'm going to have to uh, sort out the sort out the the back of the armor and the two front halves, the two front halves, that, that one there and this one here, are the two front halves that are going to end up uh, being being made after 
I've used all these pieces up to make the bodice section. Hey Don. Hi Shem. What are you up to? Uh, just, I, I wanted to mention a few things about these samples. So here, if you can please take a look at these samples that I've, that I've made. This sample, I believe, is the 309s, which uh, you can see remnants of cross-lacing uh, that's, that's been used in the, in the sample but no longer exists. So the scales exist. And this sample is actually uh, two scale and has a, a, a similar amount of actual pieces. And you can see... Uh, with with the thickness of the thread and you're still doing your figure eights crisscrosses uh, you 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 get something that's very similar to what we see on the ancient Assyrian reliefs regarding the herringbone pattern the thinner the thinner ones and these two if you have a look at the back uh, from from the archaeological evidence that's been preserved we tend to see Assyrian scales like this and here uh, so what I mean from the back they look like this and obviously the leather that would have been here in the first place uh, is, is ha has perished along with the original lacing however the remnants uh, of the lacing has been preserved across across the rows regarding the method of stitching regarding flexibility you can you can see how this one concert concertinas uh, it's got it's got quite a bit of quite a bit of play and you get you get that type of that type of flex and you notice it's still very hard it's still very hard for you to to even penetrate in the, in the gaps uh, with with an acute acute curve like this so that's the fundamental reason for the small pieces you you get more more flexibility this way uh, but you've still maintained your concertina in this fashion and I believe these as well would have been originally on a backing however uh, there are historians and academics who have suggested uh, that it's, it might not be necessary for for them to have been constructed with a backing in the first now, place. Here is another type of Assyrian scale, but before I get on to that, what I'd like to draw people's attention to is not only is the scales imbricated in an imbricated uh, fashion, so meaning offset, each row is offset, but you also, if you <coughs> if you focus on on the sides here, You'll notice how much overlap there is and where the actual uh, middle, middle ridge is. So you can see the next row will overlap all the way down to that, to that mid ridge. And that will give you ideal protection of four layers in a static position. And even more when obviously a concertinas. So this is a very defensive type of armor. And it's a relatively easy stitch, which follows which follows on from from this from these ones here that I'm doing like this as well. These are for the bigger for the bigger scales, and this method that eight that you do in order to get your uh, cross lacing is a smaller version. Now, now these particular Assyrian scales. Uh, have been found in the city of Kalhu in uh, modern-day Iraq, which is the archaeological site of uh, Nimrod. And here you can see another version of Assyrian scales that is shown on Assyrian reliefs. Now here you can see a crisscross pattern. However, if you were to use wide lacing, wide leather leather lacing, you will also see the herringbone pattern that is starting to manifest on uh, these scales here. So, so it looks like a herringbone pattern, but it's actually crisscrosses. So when they're small crisscrosses, you're, you're easily obtaining that herringbone pattern that you see on ancient Assyrian reliefs. 
And one of the reasons why these are my favorite is if you have a look, the amount of concertina you get is beautiful. And its defensibility in a static position is a minimum of four layers. So, so for example, because this scale is overlapping up to the uh, top of that midrib, you can see this section has got double protection. And then this one, this one here is cover, covering the back of this scale, double protection. So in fact, regarding quality of armor, this is one of the most defensive uh, Assyrian armors, I think, that they pulled together. And you notice that the Assyrian soldiers and elites that are around the king tend to have this version of Assyrian armor. So I can't wait to uh, eventually get an armor made out of these scales.